We all need sleep for optimal health and well-being, and while it may come easy for some, sleep can be a struggle for others. We sat down with a UCSF Fresno neuropsychologist who gives us some tips on how to help get a good night's rest. I'm here today with Dr. Katerina Mosti, and we are talking about sleep, which is something that can come few and far between for some people. So mm -hmm. doctor, if we can talk about how can people sort of wind down at the end of the night to get a good night's rest. Mm -hmm. So turning your brain off right before sleep is kind of one of the most common complaints that I hear among my patients. So that happens because most of us spend our day pretty preoccupied with family, friends, work, screen time. And so right when you're kind of hopping into bed and nothing else going on is kind of the opportunity for your brain to say, okay, what can we stress about? What are we worried about these days? Um, so one technique that I use with my patients is kind of scheduling worry time, as we call it, a little bit earlier in the evening. So maybe about an hour before bed, spend five to 10 minutes kind of reviewing um, your worries, kind of stressors. Some people like to make a to-do list for the next day and just kind of shifting that time that you would spend in bed worrying to a little bit earlier in the evening. We have also kind of more physiological techniques for kind of relaxing your body, one sure. of them being kind of progressive muscle relaxation where you're kind of tightening and then releasing your muscles, starting with your feet, kind of working all the way up. Um, and diaphragm diaphragmatic breathing, which is kind of deep belly breathing as we call it. So kind of big breath in and then big breath out. We are all addicted to our phones mm -hmm. and to our digital devices. How much does that come into play with helping or hurting your opportunity to fall asleep? Yeah, it's not that helpful, unfortunately. So a couple different reasons. One, a lot of us stay up much later than we anticipate because we're watching something on Netflix or we're kind of looking at our phone. Um, the other reason is kind of you're holding this screen which emits blue light which can really um, be harmful to sleep and kind of will push your sleep schedule a little bit later than you intend and we're holding them pretty close to our faces most of the time so I usually recommend if a patient is having any sleep issues to really kind of power down screens at least an hour before bedtime. If you are having trouble sleeping kind of three times a week for three months or more that's kind of the definition of insomnia and by by trouble sleeping, I mean trouble falling asleep, falling asleep okay, but then waking up in the middle of the night, or falling asleep, staying asleep, and then waking up really early, like 2 or 3 a.m. If that's kind of what's going on, then I would follow up with your doctor. I think the biggest symptom would be, is it interfering with your daily life? So are you fatigued? Are you having cognitive symptoms? Is it kind of affecting your mood? If any of things are going on and you're having kind of these sleep problems, um, stretching weeks and then into months, that's a good indicator that you may want to follow up with your physician. One, because it could be kind of what we call psychophysiological insomnia, meaning that maybe there's kind of anxiety or depression that's kind of affecting your sleep, but also it may be an indicator that something medical is going on. Let's talk about different age groups and genders and how much sleep, say, a young woman needs as opposed to an older man or a younger man and an mm -hmm. older woman. I mean, how much does age and gender play a role in that? pretty big in terms of age, so kind of throughout the lifespan, your sleep needs can change. So we know that infants can sleep up to 16 hours a day. Um, and then it kind of as we age, the sleep needs decrease. So for most adults, it's somewhere between six and nine hours. That's what kind of where we get this eight hour ideal from, but it, it's really quite a range. And then as we age, it can be a little bit decreased and kind of the sleep architecture, as we call it, can change a little bit. Um, but the reason why kind of sleep can change throughout the life is that our sleep needs um, indicate kind of what's going on physiologically. So especially for young children and adolescents, that's an indicator of kind of brain development still ongoing. So um, sleep can be really important for that. Um, and then it kind of as we inch into adulthood, it's good for stabilizing your mood, for consolidating memory, um, kind of cell repair. And then as we age, our sleep needs decrease a little bit, but it's still important because um, there's newer research to say that sleep can be really important to kind of removing some of those abnormal proteins that can increase your risk for dementia. Great tips out there for patients, and we hope that everyone gets a good night's rest. Thank you for your time, Dr. Moss. Absolutely. Thank you.